Hey there, Wondering Watchers. Welcome to this flip through of Two Decks by Nikki Ferrada, also known as the Van Mystic on Instagram and on Etsy. I backed the Star Seeker Oracle on Kickstarter and just got this in the mail a couple of days ago. So I tore into it, went through the guidebook, checked out the cards so I could um, talk about this deck a little bit more than just kind of blindly going through it. Um, I received this deck actually two years ago. I believe I purchased it on Etsy. So I figured I'd show you both the decks in this video. Um, for the Starseeker Oracle, because it was a Kickstarter, um, here are some of the uh, things that came with it. Certificate of Authenticity. I guess I was backer 80 out of 2,000 of these Oracle decks. There's a st sticker here. We have a bookmark where it says a Star Seeker Oracle and some postcards here uh, that are just larger size of some of the cards in this deck. So let's go ahead and kind of start off by, you can see the very similar um, kind of purplish lavender color um, and um, the boxing of these two decks. The um, cardstock in them is exactly the same. Um, this kind of clamshell box opens exactly the same. You can see these uh, guidebooks the black and white, there's really n not images in them. They're rather succinct. These are pretty much the same. Um, the interiors, this one has some writing in it. Um, the Oracle deck says, with a great leap of, no, with a great leap you fly through the seeker's portal, you walk the path following the stars that guide you to your deepest truth. The tarot deck does not have any writing inside of it. Um, the backs of the decks, they're similar and they show some of, of the cards. So the card stock in both of these are 350 GSM. The size is about 2.75 inches by 4.75 inches. The biggest difference I would say in these besides the fact that this is an Oracle deck and this is a tarot deck, um, has to do with the finish. So the Oracle deck has a, like a, a matte finish and the edges here is like lavender. And for the tarot deck, the finish is a semi, um, like a luxe semi matte and it's like a rose petal finish. And I would say I really like the cardstock on the tarot deck, which is pretty much the same as the Oracle. Um, what was difficult about the tarot deck was that rose petal finish. It feels really good, but in terms of being able to shuffle it, it's just a bit stickier. And the cards would stick together a lot more. So with the Oracle deck, um, the creator decided to just do it like a matte finish. So it's easier to kind of get through the cards. You can see um, on the tarot deck, it's more of like a darker purple edge and uh, kind of like a, a lighter backing. But you can see there's the theme is very similar for these. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the tarot deck off to the side and kind of show you this guidebook for the Oracle deck. Um, so there, the how to use the deck I think is really important because the way that the creator um, set up this deck is it's kind of segmented into certain sections. So cards one through, I believe 48 is considered the seeker's journey. And there's this kind of like, um, like light gray or white border here. And then we have the next section of cards. You can see the border is like purplish in comparison. And these are kind of considered like the guides that um, the seeker would have on the journey. And then the final, I guess these final four cards here 
um, are considered like the gifts, but they also have like a, a purplish border. And these here are extra, like I believe, um, affirmation cards as part of the Kickstarter, like our, um, I think they were like rewards that were uh, reached. So here it says, I am unafraid and free. It is a blessing to be me. It is safe to trust myself. I embrace the mysteries of life. I release the need to know. I am passionate. I am determined. I am capable of creating anything I desire. So here it starts out with kind of how to use the deck. Um, there's some spreads here, three card spreads, and then more um, complex spread. Here we have the mirror spread and it's like eight cards. We have the map and the key spreads, it's like about six, five, six cards. And it's really kind of a sense of um, the spreads in general, kind of like self-reflection, um, you know, what's on your path, how you're gonna get there, things that you need to release, things you need to um, kind of see as like a greater purpose or um, blocks and how to overcome those blocks. Here we have it, the seed spread, kind of uh, a sense of what's growing, um, what's changing, blooming, what's kind of coming to an end. And then each card has like the uh, description of kind of how this plays out or the, what the image represents on the seeker's journey. Um, and it has keywords and reversals. So that's very similar to the guidebook in the tarot deck, but let's go ahead and show you these cards for um, the Oracle. So here, I'm just gonna go through them quickly. And I would say for these cards, I really like um, Nikki's artwork on it. It's kind of almost like, I don't know, like watercolors to a certain degree. It's definitely um, kind of darker. It's got a sense of uh, darker in, in um, shading. So for some of you, it might be harder to see. I know some of these cards are meant to indicate or reflect like a a feeling of darkness and here some cards are light to reflect that feeling of lightness um but i feel like this deck the um images are brighter uh than the tarot card deck but the color schemes um and the images are very they're similar but i feel maybe not brighter i feel like the images are sharper um in this Oracle deck. And this deck is really kind of, you know, focus on concept of uh, self-healing, um, growth, and kind of going on a, on a journey that might be scary, new, um, dealing with some aspects of the past. Um, the guidebook I really find is is interesting to kind of explain what the the imagery is um and you know for the most part these cards can be like well ultimately whatever you want them to be but um it seems like the imagery here like for example awakening this person's kind of going into a dark area and um in that darkness is realizing that within them they have this light, this um, new aspect of themselves that uh, they're becoming more aware of. So this is either um, like internal, like information or learning new information, somehow um, powers within them becoming more defined. So, so I do really like the story that goes along with these cards. And a lot of these, 
a lot of the images um, or the cards and their meaning, they're similar to the fool's journey in tarot. So, but I think it can, it's, um, expands on those concepts. Like here, this falling card, it's really dark. There's, you know, you can tell there is this figure that is falling into this almost like bottomless pit. So the imagery on here being dark and really nothing in the background, um, except for like the sides of, I don't know, this cliff, this cliff, um, or these mountains, it really kind of, you can feel the, almost the lack of hope that's there. But there's a total, I believe, of 64 cards in this Oracle deck. Um, I believe that's separate from these four affirmation cards. Um, I would say like this deck is probably gonna be good for like uh, self-reflection, shadow work, um, overcoming obstacles. There's not a lot of um, like flowery cards in here. So I would say, you know, definitely it can be used for like love readings, uh, but it's, there's not any kind of cards that reflect um, like a flowery connection between people. There is, a de there's definitely connection cards, but this is more kind of concepts of um, dealing with um, aspects of self, how you appear to other people, how other people appear to you, um, going in after your dreams, pursuing your dreams. Here you have the visionary. And I believe this card actually says like the visionary is like that romantic person that or uh, like, believes in possibilities or kind of encouraging that view of looking at life with um, unlimited possibilities and that concept of dreaminess, but it's not very uh, common in this deck. This is definitely kind of overcoming your own fears, your own hesitations in life, um, kind of speaking your truth um, seeking your truth and kind of making sure that you can kind of greet the next day with a sense of um, newness and kind of um, a sense of honesty of who you are, where you're going, where you want to be, and kind of reflecting on how you kind of can get there. And here is the last card in the Oracle deck. So here I'm going to go ahead and put this off to the side. And we will take a look at the Star Seeker Tarot deck. And I'll also kind of show you the um, some of the spreads that they have here. So, uh, similar three card spreads, energy, advice, outcome. There is a spread for the way forward. So like me and my current situation, what's standing in my way, how I can move past the block, uh, where should my focus be, what's the best next step, external influences, and then outcome. There's honoring dreams spread, um, kind of like what dream is showing up for you, what is it trying to teach you. There's the star seeker spread, um, an important message from my spirit, how I can honor this message, um, like aligning with my highest path, letting go of things and then the major arcana and then the minor arcana. There is one extra card here. Um, it's at the back of the, um, I think it's at the back of the major arcana. So we'll just go through here with this tarot deck starting at the full. And the imagery for the traditional Rider Waite Smith tarot deck isn't really in these cards. Uh, like the traditional high priestess, there's like two pillars, one that's dark colored, one's light colored, and then kind of like a sheet with pomegranates. Um, and behind the sheet, there's all this water and the high priestess is sitting um, with a scroll what has uh, written on it T-O-R-A and kind of has these um, crowns to indicate the different like 
phases of the moon. So you can see the imagery of this high priestess is totally different than that. So, um, you know, for some people, like this empress is very similar, but um, the aspect of like more of the lush garden and uh, the aspects indicating the planet Venus are missing from here. So if you are newer to tarot, um, you know, this deck here, it's beautiful. Um, it feels really nice in my hands. Um, and the guidebook does a good job of explaining um, the meanings behind the cards, despite the fact that it's not exactly in line with the Rider Waite Smith version. Um, like this, this is the wheel. And this wheel is a spider web. I do love this card and the concept of being a spider um, and kind of being anywhere on this web and, you know, taking time to kind of be in a different spot in this web um, and kind of recognizing like this is, this web is uh, something you can kind of get caught in or something that you can kind of just move through. But it's totally different than the concept of the wheel of fortune where it's like the like luck changing and possibly, um, you know, the ups and downs and so forth. But for the, um, the guidebook also has really good keywords. Like here is the hanged one versus uh, the hanged man. So I believe um, the, like the tree, the aspects of the tree is totally missing here. And the tree is very, um, I guess, symbolic uh, in a lot of books explaining the concept of the hanged man, especially when um, it's in line with the story of Odin tying himself upside down to a tree, I believe. Um, so, but here it's, it's a tree is totally missing and it's just like all water down below. But I feel like this deck is good for, um, you know, self-discovery, kind of like the Oracle deck. But I feel like this is also really good for like, you know, concepts of love readings because these cards basically are the 78 cards of the tarot plus this one, this extra one called the womb. And the concept of this card is um, being in a space where you are taking in all the um, resources, nutrients, things to grow, to heal, to bloom, and not necessarily rush that process, but taking in everything that's in the environment um, and preparing for that kind of uh, time to emerge. But here it's just like soaking everything in. And here we are at the uh, minor arcana with the pentacles. And here, the five of pentacles, you can see, is totally different than the typical five of pentacles outside of a church. Um, there's two people involved in that uh, Rider Waite Smith version outside of a church. This is someone that's just under a tree. But again, the, I feel like the, the key words and the description in the guidebooks is very helpful to kind of explain the uh, similarities or explain, I guess, the differences that you um, aren't seeing with the traditional imagery here. Like here, this is the Knight of Pentacles, and there's no no horse. There is no horse on the Knight of Pentacles, um, but the Knight of Pentacles is one of the slowest moving knights. So if they're standing at the bottom of the steps, looking forward, kind of seeing each step intentionally they need to make, then that makes sense. So here we have the swords. And there's no heart with the three swords in it, but you know it's very similar. And you can see again the um, the coloring is very similar to the oracle. Um, I would say like it's hard to see the details of uh, the outlines here, so that's why I was saying you know the oracle deck seems like crisper um, than the tarot deck imagery. And I feel like the tarot deck is maybe a little, um, in terms of color, a little bit lighter. And here we are in the wands. There's three of wands, four, five of wands. And you can see the five of wands here is kind of like created 
almost like a wall and a prison for this person. Uh, the traditional five of wands, there's five individuals kind of, um, kind of throwing their wands up and fighting with each other. So again, um, you know, if you are new to tarot, um, you might want to look at a traditional Rider Waite Smith deck before getting this one. But um, I feel like the imagery you can still connect to it based on the descriptions uh, in the guidebook. So here is the King of Wands, and finally, the Cups. You can see, you can see the Cups. Definitely, if you want to do love reading, it's very similar to concepts of, you know, love, happiness. There's the Four of Cups, Five of Cups, and here, just you know, you can get a sense of like young love in this card here. Seven of Cups, and then the Nine of Cups, Ten of Cups, and then we get into the page, the Knight, Queen, and King. So that is the tarot deck. And I've already done like um, interviews of this deck because I've had it for two years, but I haven't done an interview reading for this, this Oracle deck. Let's see if these cards kind of are good for that. You can see um, back to the card stock. It's very, very sturdy. I would say the tarot, tarot deck is stiffer. Um, here's the shuffling of these cards. I would say um, I for the tarot deck, I'll just take it out. It's really hard for me to shuffle in this similar manner. So you can see I've had this card, this deck for two years, and it's a lot harder for me to kind of get that bend going into it. And I don't usually, um, you can see like these kind of just stick together. But, but I do I do like the way that they feel. Um, trying to see sometimes the wording is at the bottom, sometimes it's at the top. So just seeing which one it is. But here for the tarot deck, I feel like this is a little bit stiffer, but it's the same um, like cardstock. I maybe it's the finish on it that makes the difference. But I'll go ahead and continue shuffling this oracle deck and then come back with with a spread okay so I went ahead and shuffled the deck and I am going to pull some cards to interview it so first off, we're going to start with the essence of this deck. We have time travel. In terms of its current strength, we have the masked one. In terms of the kinds of readings it would be best applied to, we have the creator. And what this deck wants to teach, we have this card of movement. And at the bottom of the deck, the influencing energy, we have sacred workspace. So the sacred workspace is kind of like um, either creating, finding, or fine tuning a certain uh, like physical location that helps you to be more creative to kind of tap into um, like your goals, your sense of self, what like makes you be in, I guess, the zone, whatever that is for you. In terms of the essence of this deck and this time travel card, uh, this card is kind of about revisiting or visiting certain aspects of your self, perhaps your inner child, um, perhaps a future aspect of yourself, perhaps, you know, where you were, um, when you started out on a certain career path and kind of just checking in with that person 
um, or kind of checking in with that version of of you. So here, this the essence of this deck, I get a sense of like it, uh, its ability to kind of like tap into the past, the present, the future, um, you know, aspects of you that you used to be, want to be, with its current strength and the masked one here. This is um, a guide. This time travel one is kind of the journey, and this is one of the uh, the guides for the seeker. And this is a concept of like needing to really peel back the layers and seeing what is truly there. Maybe there's some kind of uh, deception going on. Maybe something there you aren't seeing clearly. Um, so with this deck's current strength being the NAST one, um, I take it to be like helping you to really discover what might not be obvious, um, looking past the superficial and seeing what is really, really there um, and information for you to kind of to, to gain and learn from. In terms of the kind of readings that this deck would be good for, we have here the creator. Um, to me, this is similar to the magician card. And also this is a, another guide for the seeker. So with the creator, it's kind of like um, looking out for those signs, seeing what inspiration is around you to kind of um, manifest something, to create something, um, kind of like be aware and use like your, your intention, your focus to um, really accept what is like in your environment uh, because you are in a position to make things come to fruition, to kind of um, put everything together and create something, something new. In terms of what this deck wants to teach, we have this movement card. So wanting um, to teach how to really embrace that, you know, burst of inspiration or energy within you, actually physically move, um, actually follow that energy to motivate you to do something. Um, and really this is kind of like to make sure you're not stuck in a certain place. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go through and read the definition so you get a sense of what this guidebook offers. So with this time travel card, we have hovering high above the density of earth. You gaze into the deep blue space of the time portal. You're held in place by your inner light and power and you contemplate where or rather when this portal will take you. The time portal never appears by chance. It reveals itself only to those who need it. It offers you the opportunity to travel along your own timeline to the past, future, or even to a parallel or past life. There is another you that needs assistance, and this is an opportunity to reach out and help. Time travel encourages you to look out across time and travel to another version of you. Perhaps there is an aspect of you from childhood that needs some love. A past life could be rising to the surface and impacting your current situation. It may even be time for you to visit your future self and meditation and decide if you like where you are headed. It is possible to heal, shift energy, and have a profound impact on yourself at any point along your timeline. Your energy is not limited to this space and time. So the keywords here are healing journey, past life, self-reflection, inner child healing. If you do reversals, then unresolved past, unwillingness to change, dispowerment, unhealed wounds. So with the masked one here. In the darkness of night, you slip into a dreamlike state between awake and asleep, in the abyss of this great darkness, something begins to take shape in front of you. A face appears, bright orange and fox-like. You see a cloak with softened edges, black with a rusty red glow. But as the cloaked creature drifts closer to you, you see it's not a face, but a mask. As the ties loosen, your stomach clenches in anticipation. A true face will soon reveal itself. Everything is not what it seems at first glance. The masked one advises you to be skeptical to ask questions and to peel back the layers before making a judgment. There's more to the story that you're not yet aware of, and you may need to do some digging in order to get the full truth. Beware of deception or misinformation at this time. 
Most importantly, give yourself the time needed to comb through everything meticulously. This isn't a time to judge quickly or to be overly trusting. Keywords, deceiver, trickster, illusion, hidden truth, reversed, unmasked, truth revealed, and honesty. In terms of the creator, the creator weaves an intricate web, imbuing each thread with potential and vitality. Each thread is part of a greater story, a living map that signals to a central goal with deep concentration, intention, and skill that this guide helps others to build the paths and plans necessary to bring dreams to life. Everything the creator touches comes to life, and so with the touch of this guide, a web of pathways come alive for you. If you are inspired, this guide shows you how to materialize your vision. Be on the lookout for opportunities or options that could help to propel your ideas forward. The creator also asks you to lean into your own creative potential. You have something unique to offer. Don't hold yourself back. Keywords, maker, initiate, initiator, producer, divine intervention, reversals, destructor, unproductive, manipulator. So with this movement card here, it is number 11. Is that 11 or is that 14? It's 14. It's kind of hard to see. The urge to move starts as a small flame within your heart, pushing and expanding outward in small waves. As you tune in, this energy grows and your body flushes with heat. Vital energy washes over areas of your body that have become too still or cold. You begin to move with the flow of this energy, at first in small rippling motions, then expanding into arching full body waves. You move with grace, and the more you move, the easier it feels. As the title would suggest, the movement card encourages movement. You may be transitioning out of a sticky energy or phase and a new sense of motivation is washing over you. Listen to the call to move in new ways and in new directions. This card may even be encouraging you to take a trip or move to a new location. This could speak to the need to move your physical body more intentionally through exercise, stretching, or walking. In some ways, energy is beginning to flow and it's time for you to move where your heart feels called to. Keywords, action, new energy, vitality, exercise, travel, reversed, stuck, stagnation, stubbornness, lack of movement. And for the sacred work space, here we have hidden beneath a great sprawling tapestry lies a small and secret doorway. This tapestry hangs on a wall in your bedroom, hiding a room within a room that is just yours. The doorway to your sacred space is small and unassuming. From the outside, under the shadow of the tapestry, one might dismiss it as the long-forgotten linen closet. But when you cross the threshold, it's like moving from mundane to magic. Everything here glows with a magical light. And here you can see, think, and feel with more ease. Sacred workspace represents an environment that inspires creativity within you. It's a call for you to create or spend time in spaces that support your flow state and higher purpose. It's also time to take a step back from spaces that feel cluttered or unproductive. You may need to restructure your physical space and clear out things that do not serve your highest potential. This could even extend to relationships or situations that are not nurturing your creativity and workflow. Keywords, supportive environment, creative flow, decluttering, reversed clutter, unsupportive environment, creative block, feeling displaced. So this is what I have for you with respect to the Start Seeker Oracle and the Star Seeker Tarot. If you have any comments about the decks or suggestions for spreads or readings, I would love to hear about it. We'll see you next time. Take care.